Question. A young girl is found dead and the police are investigating. Would it look like this? A second, will she? Friend said she came down to drink mojitas and catch some sun. Well, it looks like something caught her. Or would it look like this? Good Lord, Lord. Laura Palmer. Lord. Both examples are something we can feasibly see happening. Yes, we can imagine a hardened detective calmly and professionally investigating a body, but we can also imagine a police officer breaking down in shock after seeing the dead body of someone they knew. But does the ability to imagine what something would look like make it realistic? So let's rephrase the question. Which one is more realistic? But what do we mean by more realistic? Do we mean what's more likely to happen? What has happened before? Honestly, I don't know how to answer that, and I probably won't be able to answer that until I see a dead body myself. But that's okay. Because these are films. They're not real. Rather, just a fictional presentation based on reality. So what is realism in film, then? Well, you could get bogged down in discussing the nuances and what we mean by realism, but for the sake of brevity, I will describe it as a stylized depiction of reality. Second question. You have to depict a pimp slash criminal in a small town. Would you stylize him like this? Give me a Matthew. Want some action. Officer. I swear I'm clean. I'm just waiting here for a friend. You gonna bust me for nothing, man? Or this. If you like, Frank. Here's to your fuck. Cheers. Cheers. Wow, swap, man. You are so fucking swap. We love Ben. We love Ben. And here's the Ben. Here's the Ben. <laughs> here's to Ben. When we think of a pimp, we usually think of the former example. The flashy clothes, the cane, the yada yada yada. But we've seen this image a million times to the point where it's become a cliche. And while we can easily imagine a pimp being like this, its overuse ironically makes the depiction seem unrealistic. And throughout cinema, we can see this as a common trend. A convention is made in depicting a character, this convention becomes a trope, then this trope becomes a cliché. David Lynch recognises this pattern and cuts it off at the source by defying convention. David Lynch's pimp is every bit against convention. The pancake makeup, the feminine mannerisms, and not to mention this. A candy-coloured clown they call the Sandman Tiptoes to my room every night Just to sprinkle stardust and to whisper Go to sleep, everything is alright It's safe to say we'd probably never run into a pimp or even a character like this. But still, there is something very real about this character. So then, what makes this character so lifelike? Well, it's because the character is idiosyncratic as opposed to conventional. Let me explain. In life, we have an expectation of something. Then there is the reality of that thing, and often our expectations do not match the reality. Going back to the pimp example, we have an expectation of what a pimp should look like, and when our expectations are proven wrong within the film, we believe it to be more real because that is precisely what happens in real lives. Our expectations don't match the reality. Once our expectations are broken, we lack an understanding of that character, and crave for explanations. We left wondering about his character. How did someone like this become a pimp? Why is he wearing that makeup? And what is his relationship to the brutish Frank? He is no longer defined by his profession as a pimp, rather he is an intricate character in himself. In a way, this is a really simple trick. Like how a cinematographer can place an object in the foreground to create depth. A director can place an idiosyncratic detail on a character to give the character depth. Consider this scene with Amy Poehler in the film Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny. Okay, not the most highbrow film, but it illustrates the effectiveness of this device. You guys know what you want? Hmm. What do you recommend? I recommend that you order some food. 
The simple addition of a black eye made this otherwise functional character of a waitress into a detailed character with her own set of problems and obstacles. And this is more akin to real life. We are never just served by the perfect form of a waitress. We are served by another human who has her own set of hopes and desires, woes and troubles, ups and downs. And by a simple break of convention through an idiosyncratic detail, such as a black eye, you can remind your audience of this. And that, my friends, is idiosyncratic realism. TM Ben Gagwa. <laughs>